Welcome to Package to Purpose. My name is Edmond. Today, we are integrating our automation engine or our centralized controller, which is Ansible AWX, into Netbox, which is our single source of truth. This allows us to pull the devices that we have in Netbox into AWX and run automation workflows jobs or Ansible playbooks against this. This also ensures that when we make any changes to our inventory in Netbox, like change of device names or IP addresses, these are dynamically reflected within our automation engine, which is AWX. At this point, we have a single host, the local host, this being the AWS instance. Once we are done with this, we should see the devices we have in Netbox reflect within our automation engine. To do this, AWX would need to run a job that initiates an API call to Netbox and pulls the devices that we have in Netbox into AWS. We'll do this by running this inventory.yaml file. Recall in our previous lesson, we integrated GitHub, which is our source control into AWX, our automation engine. Now let's go through our inventory.yaml file. We have the Netbox inventory plugin, which is part of the netbox.netbox package. This is the official Ansible collection for interacting with Netbox. Then we need to provide an API endpoint which is the URL on which we reach Netbox, this URL. Then we need to provide a token that we would use to authenticate to Netbox. And there are other parameters that we are setting here. They are not validating any sets. We are grouping the devices that we pull by device roles, platforms, device types, tenant, etc. Then a key part, we are only pulling devices in Netbox that have a primary IP address set. Now we need this because it's possible we have different kinds of devices or artifacts in a box. Not all of these might be relevant to us from an automation point of view. So we want to ensure that we are only pulling what is relevant to us into our automation engine and not just dumping everything from Netbox into our automation engine. Then we have flattened custom fields set to true which ensures that if we have any custom fields in Netbox, these are treated as regular parameters. So next, we'll update our inventory.yaml file with our API endpoint. We'll generate a token in Netbox and we'll use this to authenticate. So let's take note of our API endpoint, which is this, I'll copy it. Then we generate an API token on Netbox. You go to your user, API tokens, add a token. We copy our token. We enable write. This expires. I'll just give this more because I'll remove this after this video. This is a token for AWX. And if you want to allow only specific IPs to initiate API calls to Netbox using this token, we can have our allowed IPC app. I will create, then we need to update this uh, inventory.yaml file. I will do that using VS Code. So I will drag my VS Code interface here. I will do a git pull first to ensure if there's anything that we need to update on our local repo. So our local repo is up to date. We'll update our API endpoint, then our token. We'll save this. So we have modified this file. Let's confirm that we have the right modification. So we have the API endpoint and token. We stage this for commit. We commit it. Then we push to our repository. Good. So if we check our repository now, we refresh it. We have our API endpoint, which is our netbox URL and our token. 
Now, if you look at this inventory.yaml file, it says that only pull devices in netbox that have primary IP addresses set. Currently, if we look at our devices in netbox, they don't have any IP addresses. So let's add IP addresses to this. We go to IPAM, IP addresses, we add, and it's like a 10.1.1.1. Slash 32. This is in our Veloz group, tenant group, Velox bank, and we assign this to our VPN gateway, which is our SRX. We make this the primary IP address. We create another, say 192.168.1.1. We can give a different subnet mask. It does not need to be slash 32. So I use a slash 24 here. We keep everything same. But we give this to our core switch and say it's our primary IP address. So we leave it at this. We won't assign an IP address to our Dell server and we'll use this to validate if indeed the, our inventory YAML is working as expected. So let's go back to this uh, devices and validate that we now have IP addresses. We do. So now we're able to come into AWX, which is automation engine, create an inventory file which references this inventory.yaml file in this repository. And we should be able to initiate those API calls to netbox and pull our inventory. Before we do that, there is one more thing that we have to do, which is creating an execution environment. Now, let me explain why we need this. Now, if we look at our inventory.yaml file, we have our netbox inventory plugin which is part of the netbox.netbox .netbox package, which is the official Ansible collection that AWX can use to interact with netbox. Now the netbox inventory plugin requires the PI netbox Python library. So PI netbox is a Python library that would be used to talk to netbox's REST API. What this simply means is that before AWX can successfully initiate API calls to netbox, it needs to have the netbox.netbox .netbox package and the PI netbox Python library. Now in AWX, jobs are executed inside containerized environment. This containerized environment is simply called an execution environment. The logic is simple. Have a container image, right? In the container, you have all the packages that you need and the libraries. And when AWS attempts to initiate that API called netbox, it would use that container image that has all the packages and plugins you need. I have created this Docker image and made it public. So you can access it from right here. I'll copy this. And if you want to create your own image, I have pushed the files to the repository. So if you come to our Ansible EE netbox repository, you will see three files here. The first one is the execution environment or the YAML, which references our dependencies, requirements or the YAML, requirements or text. And if we look at requirements.yaml, we see the netbox.netbox .netbox collection or package. And if we look at our requirements.txt, we see our PI netbox Python library. So what we we'll do is that within AWX, we would create an execution environment. We add, we call this our Ansible netbox execution environment. Then we reference the image here. As I said, this is public, so you can use this if you want. Then you say that always pull this container before running it in case you've made any changes. Then we have our Velox bank as our organization. Then we save. So now we can go to inventories, add an inventory. We call this netbox inventory. Organization, we put this in Velox bank. That is all that we need. Let's just give this a description. Then we save. Then we indicate the source. The source here is the inventory.yaml file so that AWS can use that and initiate those API calls. So we call this netbox, then execution environment. This is where it comes in. So we are saying that AWS, if you want to initiate those API calls, use this execution environment, which has our netbox.netbox .netbox collection and our PI netbox 
Python library. Source here, we source from a project. The project we have the netbox dynamic inventory. So let me take a step back. So the project we have the project here, netbox dynamic inventory. If we look into our project, we are seeing that we are just referencing our netbox repository. In fact, let me just change this to netbox repo so that conceptually we can always match a project to a repository. So we save this. Then let's sync and make sure that we are able to sync our repository in GitHub to AWX. We are able to do that. So now we go to inventories. This netbox inventory, we have a source. We add the source. We call this netbox. We say use this execution environment. Where do you see your inventory.yaml file? Want to source it from a project? What project? The netbox repository project. Where is the inventory file? Look into the root of this project. That is all that we need to do. And we save this. And we attempt to sync to netbox. Basically, what we are doing here is that AWX is initiating an API call to netbox in an attempt to pull the devices that we have in netbox that matches what we specified within our inventory.yml file. It says that it was successful. So if we go back to our inventory and look at our host, now we have some two hosts. We have the Accra DC call switch one. If we look at this, it has this IP address. Then we have the VPN gateway, which has this IP address. So if we take a look at Netbox, we have the call switch and the VPN gateway. We don't have the server, which makes sense, right? Because our invented.yaml file said only pull devices in Netbox that have a primary IP address assigned. The Dell server does not have one assigned. So we check our host and Aside our local host, we see these two other devices and we can see the groups that this device is part of. To validate that our inventory.yaml file is working as expected, let's go back to Netbox. Then create an IP address and assign to our, to our server. So IPAM, where are you? IPAM, IP addresses. We add an IP address, say 192. 168.20.10. Yes, an IP address. Then tenant group, Velox group, tenant Velox bank. We are saying let's use this. This goes to our IDRAC on our server and it's our primary IP address. So we have this. In fact, now let's go and change this 10.1.1.1. To let's say 10.10.10.1 and see whether this will reflect in AWX. So now, if you go back to our inventories, you go to our inventory that we created, sources, and we sync with our netbox. Basically, do an API call to netbox. Let's see what the outcome is. All right, this was successful. And now if you look at our host, we have the, the Dell server showing here. Initially, we didn't have it. So the Dell server is showing with the IP 192.168.20.10. We can look at our groups that it is part of. It is a Dell Power Edge. It's an application server. It's within our Accra DC. It is in a compute rack, right? And it's part of Velox Bank. And if you go back to our host, for example, I think we changed the IP of, wasn't the call switch? Which IP did we change? Yes, the VPN gateway from 10.1.1.1 to 10.10.10.1. So all of these have reflected. But the question that I'm sure you have is, when we make changes to Netbox, do we always have to come to our inventory, go to our source, and refresh no, 
you don't have to do that. We can create a schedule that says that, look, AWX at specific intervals, go to Netbox, issue API calls, and update your host with any changes. You might also want to get notified, right? If you issue these scheduled jobs and whether they succeed or not. In our next episode, we would integrate AWX, which is our controller, and Slack for notifications. Slack as in S-L-A-C-K. Once we do that, we would come back and create a schedule so that AWX can go to Netbox and pull inventory and we get notified via Slack when this job starts and whether the job succeeds or fails. I hope you find this episode or this series interesting. If you do, kindly hit like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.